and welcome. This is Ruth and today I'm going to show you through the Golden Falling Leaves die set and the corresponding stamp set and then this beautiful little Autumn Sentiments die set as well. These are all tonic and this one has 25 dies. There are uh, 23 clear stamps in that one and then this one has 14 dies. Now they're all launched at the one time and they sort of make a lovely little collection but you could definitely use these all separately. And even though the theme is autumnal, I would definitely suggest using all of these, these and these, and even some of these as well, uh, for spring, summer, just whatever, anything that you've got flowers and foliage in, these are just going to be great. I'll have a little look at this one first of all. So this contains 25 dies, as I said, and some of these are quite large. So we've got four big dies here, and then inner ones to match that. And if you cut the two of those together, you'll get a lovely little frame. So I'll show you how to do that. And you could add acetate or whatever little shaker pocket in behind that. Um, you could even add lots of these together. You could make all sorts of things with them, but more of that in a moment or two. I just want to show you through them briefly. We've got beautiful leaves here that are just going to be really, really beautiful if they're layered up. Um, maybe even given a bit of dimension with a ball tool and a foam pad or something like that. And you could even colour them. They don't have to be perfectly plain colours. Now I've gone ahead and used some of my sparkle sprays. You can also use shimmer mist, shimmer powders, or pastes, all sorts of Nouveau products uh, to colour the paper before you cut them out. And that is really, really beautiful. They're also absolutely ideal for little scraps of card as well. So, well, more of that in a moment. But you'll see here, sorry, I should have kept that open because... Uh, those large, four large stamps there actually fit into the centre of these. But I'm thinking, I'm not too sure, I need to check first of all, but I think those might be really, really beautiful on vellum as well and then cut out and they might make skeleton leaves, that type of thing. Uh, and then we've got all of these here. So we've got autumn greetings, happy and blessed. Just wanted to say wishes for you. You make me so very hello and fall. So lots of lovely things that you could put on there and send some really tiny stamps as well that you could build up a pattern with and then some inside parts for some of the smaller leaves here as well but these main ones would look really really beautiful embossed, uh, heat embossed to create a beautiful background now moving on to these ones there are 14 dies so there are 7 sentiments and then you've got the outside um, drop shadow or backing plate or whatever you like to call that there so we've got hello, and obviously that doesn't necessarily have to be a, an autumn greeting at all. Hello and smile, inspire, thankful, and then you have got autumn and fall there. And uh, well, I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use those at any time of the year, because we know lots of people who inspire us, we're thankful for lots of things, and lots of people make us smile. I'm just looking here, you could definitely use some of these along with these as well. So uh, you make me, uh, well you could have, uh, you make me so very happy, wherever that is, somewhere there, happy, yes. Or you could have, you make me smile here uh, and all sorts of things. We could have grateful for you. Loads and loads of different combinations of that. But anyhow, I've talked more than enough about that. Uh, I'm going to go and get some lovely card out and come straight back and we'll get straight into it. So in the meantime, if you haven't already subscribed, maybe you'd like to think about doing that because that way you'll be able to keep up to date. You'll not miss any of my videos. I'm always very, very busy creating videos and hopefully you enjoy them. If you do, please come back, hit the notification bell and then that will keep you up to speed with everything. And if you do enjoy them, I really, really would love it if you'd give the video a little thumbs up and leave me a little comment. That way, if you have any questions or anything you want to say, we can keep in touch. And I always appreciate that. But more of that in a moment. I'll be right back. Oops, <laughs> look what happened. I decided to do some die cutting and I just got carried away. I was really, really enjoying myself. So first of all, I got a piece of white card and I sprayed it with um, sparkle sprays, just anything I had actually just in those colors, just a spray from uh, quite a wee bit away into it. And then while that was still wet, I put some shimmer powders onto the top, some falling leaves there and some whatever this one is, Sunray Crozette. 
Um, and I sprayed that over there and then I even added some gold um, embossing powder right onto the top of that because while that was still damp that held that really well. And then I dried all that off and I got this sheet of the most beautiful card. Really, really beautiful colours. And then as you can see, I made the most of it. And I'll hold on to that because I'm sure I'll be able to take some more little tiny pieces out of it. But I have got these really, really beautiful die cuts from it. Uh, some bigger ones as well, but mostly I was using that one for the small intricate ones. And then I also made another piece which I haven't um, used yet. And that looks really lovely as well. And that has got some sparkle sprays on there as well with nothing else on top of that, just sparkle sprays mixed through. And I've dried that off with a heat gun and that's ready to roll as well. So then I got out one of my old paper pads. It was a tonic one from a little while ago. Um, I'll put the name on the screen. But I loved this sort of script. It had butterflies and things on the back of it. I love the script effect on it there. And I cut out the larger shapes of the leaves and then just a couple of the smaller ones as well. And I got some ink. Uh, what did I say just what that was? This one here, it was rumba red and I used it with this little ink dauber just around the edges like so. And you can see there that I didn't have to use very much of it. But I folded each of them on the uh, right in half and then just went over the spine of it there, or the where that fold was, with the ink dauber as well, so that I got that line down the centre. So I've got lots of those to work on as well. And then I took some pearlised paper. So I've used red velvet and cosmic copper. They're absolutely beautiful together and lovely autumnal sort of colours. And I've also got some here. You can see this is pearled gold um, vellum paper, and that is 100 GSM. And all together, I'm delighted with how those look and I'm going to use them on several of my cards. So right away, I've got an A6 card and I have cut, there's the card. I have got some of the red velvet cut as a mat there to put on the top. Then I'm going to go for some white on top of that. And then I've layered up some of these leaves just to go up at the top. So I have two of this, I really, really love that shape. And actually, sometimes whenever I go for this kind of a look, I distress the whole thing and I'll put ink around the outside. But I thought it actually stood out really, really well against a really clean cut card. So I'm going to go with that. I've got two of these in the paper with the ink on, one in the gold um, vellum. And I'm going to do this and then add a little piece of this on top here, the little spriggy kind of thing in vellum and one on there. And I'll probably put a little bow up at the top when I finish that. I've taken the thankful, I've die cut that and I'm going to put that on here. And then I have my little stamp which says for you and I'm going to just stamp that on there. So what I want to do first so that I'm able to use my stamping platform and make sure I get this in the right place is I'm going to set these aside, just take this layer and I'll stamp this on first and then glue this directly on top and everything else will go from there. I want to stamp that on first and just make sure everything's with that perfectly correct because the last thing I want to do is get everything else on and then stamp it and maybe make a mistake. So we'll stamp that and then layer the rest up. one of the more sparkly leaves onto the top there and then my little twine bow on there and I think that turned out lovely but there's so many ideas with this I never expected when I opened the set that uh, I'd get so excited about leaves but there you are I'll be right back with more. I've got a 5x7 card this time in ivory 
and I cut a layer to go on top of that in the cosmic copper again and then a smaller one in the ivory again and you can see there that I have die cut a little aperture out of it with the centre of one of the leaves so I've also taken the same die along with the uh, that's this one along with the outer one and I've cut those together and I've got this which will be a little frame to go on here but it's the smaller one that I've made the aperture with and now I've got some ink here this little pad is called let me see soft suede and I'm just going to very lightly rub some around the edge here just to distress this a little bit a little bit with this now so I have glued the little frame on here and then I have added 3D foam pads the whole way around here and you can see they're actually double thickness and I wanted to make a little shaker element in there so I've taken one of Tonic's new little shaker bags and you get them in here in packs of 10 I just wanted to make sure that it fitted in there so I trimmed a little piece off the top and then I left myself a little lip here I cut this piece shorter than this one and put 3D er, <laughs> I tack tape along there and I'm just going to fold that over when I get the sequins inside but just so that the sequins actually move about freely in there I've got my little anti-static bag and I'm just going to rub some of the powder on the inside of that and that's actually heading both sides at once when I do that. There we are. Now I have made up a little mixture of sequins. Um, I know I've gone ahead and done it because I just thought it looked beautiful and they're in there and Look at those lovely colours, aren't they beautiful? And they go really, really beautifully with this. So now I'm just going to create this little pocket again by attaching this top over. That's it all nicely sealed and those will all move about inside and I can just attach that on there. Just make sure you've got the edges sealed off really well so that no escapees get out and sort of roam about your card but then that's it all sealed up and ready and all I need to do now then is because I've made sure that this little seam isn't visible behind this aperture I can go ahead and add some high tack tape along this edge right along here and here and pop that right in behind there hello out of that lovely paper that I made the pattern one with all the shimmer powders and embossing powder and everything um, and I'm just going to put that on here and then when I've got that on there I've got some of these that are made from the same card the same paper and I'm going to attach them on all around here so I'm just going to check for the, the um, best placement for them and glue them on And there it is and I think that actually looks really well with a mixture of the tiny sort of solid shapes and then the ones that are slightly bigger with the open centres on them as well. And then this brings this all together and well I think it looks lovely and really really think twine looks beautiful on an autumn card. So there you are. Um, I'm going to go and have a look at something else but before I do I was just going to say um, I think these little pieces as well would make lovely shaker elements inside so you don't necessarily have to have sequins if you don't have any of those you could cut these out in a lovely bright glitter card or a um, mirror card or something like that and they would look absolutely beautiful in there too. I thought I'd make a really really quick bookmark next so I've taken this die I really really love this one and it's symmetrical which is always helpful as well and then I've taken the centre piece of it as well. So I've cut this one out twice in the pearlescent card and this one out twice in that lovely sheet of uh, patterned paper that I made with the sprays a little while ago and these are just going to get glued together by the little tabs here so I've folded those backwards just to be sure and then I've taken a die which makes a tassel and it's out of the Loaded Pockets Rosette die set although there's one in the uh, latest memory book as well 
and you don't necessarily have to use that you can use any kind of little tassel but I have made that one up and then I have threaded some twine down through it because I just think twine's beautiful and I'm going to glue that in there and that will keep those both together and uh, so long as that doesn't come out past this fold we're good to go I've actually just added a tiny little piece of glue in there and there because when it was just this piece uh, these two sort of moved around a little bit and it wasn't stable enough you're never ever going to have to open this up so that this is at right angles to each other so a little bit of glue just inside this tip and this tip and you need to keep the rest of this flat because obviously that's going to go inside pages so let's just pretend for a moment or two this is a card I made a while earlier let's just pretend that this is a book and you want to mark your page so we'll just pop that over the page there and then this can fold over the front I've just added a little bow of twine up at the top there so obviously that piece is going to stay outside the book no matter what way you've put it so if that's going to be inside maybe like this and the book's closed over that's not going to obstruct anything so it's just a tiny little bow and I didn't want to add big long tails on it so that it would get in the road of the pages but that's a rather cute little bookmark I'm back with another 5x7 card and I've got some of the red velvet pearlescent card on top of it and now I've got a piece of ivory card and you can see I've got some twine across the top now you probably noticed when I was making the bookmark that when I'm tucking twine in behind and I don't want a big sort of bump there I open the twine out a little bit and flatten it and then glue it down so I've glued that down and I've also put a little bit of tape on uh, just to keep it secure and I'm going to glue this right down on top of that card so now I've got some of these left from before there and um, I really really love that it's a really really um, nice way of just getting some distressed area but I do think it looks good against the plane without having this all distressed because that could make it a, a little bit too dark I think so I'm just going to go ahead now and um, work out which placement looks best for these and sort of hang them from this little piece of twine I carried on there with that and I glued all of these on here and I only put glue at the top and then a little bit so there's a little bit of movement in it and uh, I always think that adds a little bit of extra interest uh, rather than everything just being totally flat and some of this is up over the top of the little bit of twine as well there and then I went ahead with some of these extra little die cuts the ones with the sort of sparkly effect to them and glued them on on top there as well then I stamped out the You Make Me and I cut that off the ivory card and backed it onto some of the red velvet card and cut the smile out in ivory and backed it onto the little backing plate in red velvet and I popped that little bit up on 3D foam pads and there we have another little card. I made one more card here and this is a 5x5 five five in ivory and I don't normally make cards where you just glue the things directly to the card front but I thought that was very nice it actually is a very very obvious way of using those dies and um, I thought I wasn't going to even bother doing it because you'd have that idea yourself but then I thought you know it looks nice anyway so I'll just go ahead and I had all those little pieces cut because right at the beginning when I made all of the little, little backgrounds and everything I just kept putting all the dies through and cut them all out at one time and that meant I've got plenty left to play with and that turned out well as well now I'm just going to show you a couple of, that's all the cards I'm going to make, so I'm going to show you a couple of ideas of uh, other ways of decorating these. So this is just a plain die cut and I've actually just used one of my styluses, so an embossing tool like this, to put some veining into that one. And I have added some embossing powder and different pieces onto that there. And that's just another way of creating a lovely textured leaf. On this one I have done the same veining with the stylus and I have dabbed some uh, ink around the outside here and you can see it's dabbed because once I put the embossing powder on top of that it's gone sort of bubbly and it's really really lovely a very very nice textured effect on that as well 
Then there's one more here and then I'll leave you to it. I have cut out the centre piece to this leaf in the beautiful pattern again and then I have heat embossed the stamp onto that one. Now there's loads and loads of other ideas of ways you could use that. I've got lots and lots of things that I could have done with all of these. Lovely little uh, autumn place names. You could you don't even need to make a card from them. You could simply just put someone's name on that and set, set that on a little plate in front of them and that would be really, really pretty. Inside something like this or on a tiny little saucer, that would be really, really pretty. I've finished for now and uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. I certainly could have gone on a lot more with that one because, as you can see, I had loads more cut out and, well, you know, I could make stencils with those because you could just cut those leaves in and carry on that way. There's so much and you could actually make background patterns with lots of these uh, pieces here, these stamps and all sorts of things. But that's it for now and I hope you've enjoyed it. So thanks very, very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do that and hit the notification bell. And leave me a little thumbs up and a little comment if you have time as well. And all my affiliate links to everything I've used in this will be down below in the description. I'll get a little commission from that, but it won't cost you anything extra. So thank you very, very much to everybody who uses those. And in the meantime, happy crafting. Bye bye.